morning prayer, right one, begins on page 38. And we are confined to doing morning prayer since we are not able to gather as a community and uh, celebrate the Eucharist. But one day we will be back and uh, we will be gathered uh, as a community celebrating the Eucharist and we uh, will have a glorious celebration at that time. In the meantime, uh, we are relegated to morning prayer, which is an ancient um, Anglican service. And uh, that service begins on page 38 with the uh, passage from Joel, the second passage under Lent. Render your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Confession of Sin on page 41. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hand, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Please kneel. Almighty and merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. The Venite on page 44, we will pray together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let Let us us heartily heartily rejoice rejoice in the strength of our salvation. salvation. Let Let us come come before before his presence with thanksgiving and and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For For the Lord is a great God and a great King King above all all gods. gods. In In his hand are the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands have prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let, Let the, the whole earth stand in awe of him, for, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Let us open our hearts to hear God's word. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord 
and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the, uh, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and breath upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place on you your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join us by praying responsibly by half verse. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let, Let your ears consider, consider well, well the, the voice, voice of, of my supplication. supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O, o Lord, Lord, who could, could stand? stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, therefore, therefore you, you shall, shall be feared. feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In, him. In his my word is my hope. hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. More, more than, than the watchman for, for the morning. morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with, with the, the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And, and he, he shall, shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring mer merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. 
but let us go to him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Mary heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When he had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not, come to, not yet come to the village, but was still at a place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. <clears throat> it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. Thank you for joining us out there. Did you imagine four weeks ago that you would have a whole new vocabulary? Flatten the curve, shelter in place, wet market, social distancing. And here we are, isolated in our homes, as the specter of a death sentence stalks us. Ironic that our assigned gospel text involves a man sealed in a small locale, the victim of the very death we fear. In the 1650s, Thomas Hobbes wrote that life is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Most of us have lived insulated from solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. The last two centuries have given us a conviction that humanity didn't really need God that we could innovate and invent and manipulate our environment and save ourselves. 
We have known a life that compared to the rest of human history is an anomalous bubble as the Earth's population has ballooned from one and a half billion to nearly eight and life expectancy more than doubled since 1900. We conquered polio, cured cancers. We assumed air conditioning, same day delivery and carry pocket computers containing nearly all human knowledge. We have the power to reduce nature as Joseph Conrad wrote, to the shackled form of a conquered monster. At least we thought we did. But the monster has broken free. And while we were arguing over politics, a terrible new virus has left us with an unnerving awareness. Our existence is precarious. Human life, fragile. In our hubris, we bound ourselves in the great clothes of sin and used the stone of technology to hide from ourselves. We expected life to be lovely and comfortable, sipping third-wave lattes in trendy coffee houses. Things were working out fairly well, and we assumed they would only get better. It might surprise you that progress has not traditionally been a Christian idea. J.R.R. Tolkien, a medievalist, expressed the historic view when he wrote, quote, Actually, I'm a Christian. I do not expect history to be anything but a long defeat. Now you're probably thinking, gee whiz, Father Matt, this is gloomy. Where's the good news? Hang with me. Have you heard of the Stockdale Paradox? Admiral Jim Stockdale spent eight years as a POW in Vietnam. And when asked... Who didn't survive the POW camps? He said, easy. It was the ones who didn't make it were optimists. The ones who said, we'll be home by Christmas, and then we'll be home by Easter, and then we'll be home by Thanksgiving. And when Christmas rolled around again, they just couldn't take it. They died of a broken heart. The ones who survived, he said, held two paradoxical ideas. One was the ability to stare unflinchingly at the truth of the situation. And the other was faith that they would prevail in the end. How does one stare unflinchingly at a world unraveling and remain optimistic of the, of the ultimate outcome? Well, turn with me to the Gospel of John. And if you've got a Bible, you can open to John chapter 11, which is our reading, but keep one finger there and go to John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, because these are the key to unlocking the gospel of John. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. These are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name written so that you might come to know that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life in his name. And so everything that John records is for that purpose, that we believe in him and have life in his name. Now, now we're used to a world that revolves around us, but John wrote to tell us not about us, but about Jesus Christ, the God-man who came to our rescue. And John gives us seven signs that prove Jesus is the I Am, the one and only Son of the living God, God in the flesh, the same one who spoke creation into existence, the second person of the Holy Trinity. He gave seven signs, more than miracles, which are events that defy the possible. John records signs, events that point beyond themselves to a deeper truth much in the way a railroad sign points to the locomotive beyond it. You have to look past the sign to what the sign points to. Now Jesus says in our passage today, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And then he raises Lazarus from the dead. And in this John 7th sign, Jesus calls the dead from the grave with but a word. What does it mean to be the resurrection? How can a person be an event, especially a future event? Well, here's how. Fellowship with Jesus is a participation in the very life of God. 
God life is rooted in and supplied by Jesus' triumph over death in the grave. As the ancient prayer says, by his death, he destroyed death. For those walking with Jesus, victory over the grave is a here and now present reality. Jesus looked Mary in the eyes and said, your brother is alive. In me, he rose before his body perished. And then Jesus demanded the stone to be removed and spoke, Lazarus, come forth. I'd like to suggest three questions for us to ponder this morning. First, what seals you from the word of life? The words of life only penetrate an empty tomb. What keeps you from hearing Jesus' voice? For me, it's often busyness. And most of us have flexible time right now we've never had. My, my advice is ruthlessly eliminate whatever is blocking you from hearing the voice of God. And so here's one idea for that. Give your Bible as much time as you give the news. That's just a simple one. Give the Bible as much time as you give the news. Second, what binds you? Once brought to life, the grave closed still clung to Lazarus. What holds you back in your walk with God? Hebrews 12.1 says, let us throw off every sin that hinders us and so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. Now more than ever, we need release from that which binds us. In Acts 3.20, Peter preached, repent and turn back that times of refreshing might come from the Lord. And third, how can you bring God glory in your ordinary, everyday life? Once released, Jesus commanded him, let him go home. A divine exchange has been made, friends. Our sin, sickness, and death for his. His, sin, his sinless righteousness and eternal life becomes ours. Jesus became what you are so that you might become what he is. Jesus calls us from our graves, calls us to ruthlessly remove anything that keeps us from hearing his voice, calls us to allow ourselves unbound from the stench of sin to walk in freedom, calls us home to himself to bring him glory. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but for the second week, Jesus said that a malady was for God's glory. It's been said that God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. There are two great purposes in this world, the demonstration of God's glory in Jesus Christ and humans treasuring that glory above all else. And those two great purposes meld into one because Treasuring God's glory above all else, even life itself, is the way we demonstrate God's glory. God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. So Trinity, in this time, allow God glorified in you. Walk not in fear, but in the stark glare of truth. But walk also in the hope of your final end. The grave will not hold you. So don't let it hold you now. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Amen. Amen. On page 53, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please kneel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Call it for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplication and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the time for uh, your personal personal prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord God in uh, the setting of your family uh, and in your home, please pray those prayers out loud. And you can also type this in the comments for the for the pastors to see what the name is. How would they do that? Um, just in the comment box on Facebook or YouTube. Okay. Type in the prayer. You can type in the prayer and uh, we have um, God, we ask that your healing power come upon us, intervene, not only in uh, our homes, in our state, in our country, but worldwide. Let your healing power curtail this uh, dangerous virus. And as you said in today's gospel, uh, this is uh, for the opportunity for the glory of God to shine through. And uh, we ask that you use <coughs> and when this virus is curtailed and quick time, 
we will praise your name from the mountain top. Page 58, the general thanksgiving is stated. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all, for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee, and holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The prayer of St. Chrysostom. Please pray together. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Well, before we wrap up, I would like to welcome you online. It's interesting to be online church. We're still figuring out how to do it and what it means and how long we have to do it for. Uh, there are a few things coming up this week that you might want to know about. Um, first of the, uh, the last of the Lenten series on Anglican prayer practices, that's going to involve uh, uh, walking the labyrinth. So you're welcome to walk virtually. <laughs> Or if you would like an appointment, I think we could probably have three or four of the folks come and walk with us. And you also could make an appointment that day on Wednesday to come down and walk on the labyrinth. So uh, if, you would, uh, if you would email Susan at the office, we'll be setting up 15-minute slots so that you could be spaced out distance wise from anybody else in the labyrinth. Uh, Monday and Wednesday, Father Ken and I are starting a new segment that, uh, that preach from their porch. 10 a.m. on Monday is myself. 10 a.m. on Wednesday is Father Ken. Uh, so join us on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock. It'll, it'll last uh, five, five, seven minutes on, on Monday and Wednesday. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We will be here doing this, but then we are excited to announce the kickoff of something that we'll get to do with lots of our friends. It's called uh, Holy Week Together. It's a diocese-wide Holy Week celebration every night at 7 p.m. during Holy Week. From one of the cardinal parishes in the Diocese of Florida will be a liturgy, and on Good Friday we'll have one at both noon and 7 p.m. But, but basically, Holy Week, you can, have a, uh, you can have a spiritual retreat without leaving home. So Holy Week together as a diocese, we invite you to join us with that. Um, giving the ministry of the church has not dissipated. It continues and, in fact, will will step up significantly as more people become ill. There are four ways to give. The first one is online at trinitysca.org. Um, you can go to the Give, Serve page and find us that way. You can text to give at 646-832-4848, 646-832-4848. And just put in a dollar amount and text it. It'll come to us. You can mail a check to the office. And you can do automatic bill pay through your bank's online portal. So there are four ways you can do that. We thank you for your continued gifts and tithes and offerings of support for the work of Jesus. And now let us bless. Oh, no, wait a minute. We have birthdays and anniversaries. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. 
And in fact, I know there's, I know of one birthday. I know that it's Alice, Alice's birthday. Anybody else has a birthday? Who typed it in right now? The online pastor is sitting in front of us, monitoring those. But let's pray now for everyone with a birthday. Oh Lord, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin a new year of life in you. May you bless them in wisdom and in knowledge all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then anniversaries. If you have an anniversary this week, let us know. You could send in a message to our online our online pastor right now. And uh, today, that's uh, that's Justin. And Justin is out there with his partner, Courtney. And then we also have uh, the LeBays that do our music. So Courtney and Justin are our online pastors for Facebook. Jim and Carolyn LeBay for YouTube. So um, when you get a chance, say hi to an online pastor. Anniversaries this week, Clark and Alice Alger, 43 years. Can you believe what a smart man Clark is? If you, if you can't get your anniversary at Christmas, get it at your wife's birthday. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm going to get in trouble for that. <laughs> well, let's pray for everyone with an anniversary. Oh, Lord, we thank you for these couples, in particular to the elders as they celebrate this anniversary. We pray that you would give them many more happy returns to the day and that this year would be the most fantastic one they've ever experienced. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take us away, Father Tanner. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. That's a hard thing to remember. <laughs> well, especially for you, because you're the Jen is the most anti-social person I've ever met. <laughs>